Uh, my name is Kevin Wheatley. I am the owner of Polaris Blinds. We manufacture all kinds of blinds, mainly to supply the trade. I've done for a number of years. Over the past three to four years, conservatory roof blinds have become more and more popular because obviously they're going to cut the heat down in your conservatory and they, they give it a nice comfortable feel as well. They turn your conservatory into a, an extension when you want them to. The reason that we're doing the video is that we supply a lot of online retailers who either claim to or give the impression that they're manufacturing these blinds. The reality is that very few of these people actually do make them themselves. They either buy them off us or somebody like us, um, put their own margins on and then um, go along and fit them and, and take the brownie points as if they've manufactured them. If anything goes wrong, they then ring us, wait until we're back into the area. Um, we will do what we can to fix them. Um, and, and generally, they're, they're, they're taking very little responsibility for what's quite a big job. Um, we've started supplying direct simply because, by cutting out the middleman, firstly, we can guarantee the prices. But more importantly to us, we can guarantee the service. Because when you pick up the phone, if anything goes wrong, or when you want advice on the blind or a technical issue, we can pretty much give you the answer straight away. If we cannot, we can come in here, put a blind on the bench, um, find out what the problem is and, and get back to you straight away. We also have fitters on the road pretty much 24-7. So we, we're not waiting for somebody to be back into the area before we can come along and repair your blinds for you. So I'm going to make one of the most basic shapes, to be fair, on the uh, Perfect Fit International roof blind system. It's going to be a triangle. We're firstly going to make the frame and then we're going to make a blind to fit into it. There are certain things that we've already covered, i.e. we've already cut the frames to the size that we needed, simply because you can possibly hear in the background the saws next door and rather than running about, we've, we've got it prepped up to a reasonable degree. The first thing that we do is we will send our fitter out to uh, survey your job. He will then measure it and he will send us a, a series of drawings which have got the shape of the blind on them. We also get a series of sizes supplied by Lobolite. Lobolite are the manufacturers of the components. Um, world renowned, been around for a long time, we've dealt with them for 20 years. Don't ever get a problem that isn't sortable. N nothing's bulletproof but they are generally very good. So the first thing we get is this printout. It tells us what sizes to cut the frames to. It also tells us, I don't know if you can see, where to punch the holes. This is in order to fit it to the conservatory roof. And it also tells us what the angles need to be into the corners. They generally want to be 90 degrees, but it tells us these as well. We would then take aluminium sections and we will bend them loosely to the angle that they need it to be. And they, they give the frame some inherent strength. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to Assemble the frame onto the bench, loosely to the shape it wants to be, which is going to be there. So what we have there is a loose, loose triangular shape. We then insert flexible corners. You can get rigid corners for the 90 degree joints. Problem being that when they're finished they look slightly different to the, 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 the flexible corners that we've made. So we then have to insert these in again just to hold the blind loosely into position. Nothing at this point is cast in stone. So there we have loosely the shape that we want the blind to be. We then insert our aluminium sections, Lo again loosely at this stage because we need to make sure that the angles uh, finish up quite exact really. But 
depending on the length of the blind, if, if this is a couple of degrees out, it can make probably 10 or 15 mil difference at the top, which obviously is, uh, is a substantial amount to correct on the job. Once that's in position, quite happy with that. So, what we're going to do is tighten these flexible joints down. <coughs> There's a little bit of forgiveness once we once we come to fit the blinds, but it obviously wants to be as accurate as we can get it here. What we don't really want is the fitter coming to your house or, or whatever the installation is and having to try and adjust these once it, once he gets to your job. Apart from anything else, it's always going to be easier for us to do it as on the bench rather than the fitter trying to work upside down on the conservatory roof or up and down the pair of ladders on what's invariably a blazing hot day to try and, and just tweak the blind a little. On the non-perfect fit blinds that we do, the skill is involved in the fitting of it because the fitter will make the blind fit your roof. On the perfect fit blinds, the skill is in the measuring because as long as the fit has measured it correctly, which usually they do, um, it, it makes life a lot easier for them because we're actually fitting the blinds here, we're fitting the blinds into a frame and effectively all the fitter should be doing is fitting the frame to the conservatory roof. Some of the guys next door prefer the um, electric screwdrivers, I am kicking and screaming into the technological age. everything's done on that. What we're then going to do is just check that the angles that are supposed to be 90 degrees are 90 degrees, which we're going to do. That's fine. <coughs> yeah, that's fine as well. You can probably see that they're, they're where they want to be. If they are a little bit out, the reason why we don't put these in firmly, you can actually just bend those a little bit and it takes care of any any minor normality. And then you can push it in. As soon as the aluminium section is going, that now becomes quite a quite a rigid frame, you can do pretty much whatever you wanted with that and it's not within reason, it's not going to go anywhere obviously if you give it a great great bang it's going to move but in the main that's that's a sturdy frame now. What we then need to do is <coughs> fix some brackets into this which will allow the blind to be fitted into the frame. Quite simple, pre-drill the holes, we've, again we've already done this because the, the drills are next door, pre-drill holes and just fit in a bracket into each one. TV chef doing this. He's one I preferred earlier. Right, that's the frame almost finished. What we need to do to, just to finish it off is we need to put the put some plastic strips onto the corners um, just to, to neaten the blind up. The reason that we don't do it now is once the blind goes in, if it needs a little bit of tweaking, once the plastic's on, if we then move the frame, it, it the plastic finishes up in 
in the wrong place. So we do that as a, as a last job, one of its final checks. We also have um, some more holes to punch onto the diagonal of the blind. The reason that we don't do this now is this is what fastens the blind to the frame. And what we want to do is make sure that the holes fall in between support lines that the blind's going to finish up with. So that is, that's the frame finished. Uh, what I'm then going to do is make a blind fit the frame. So I'll just put that to one side for the time being. Oh, again here, <coughs> excuse me, our fitter, when he's measured it, will enable us, he, he gives us some sizes and that enables us to produce a programme. We've actually finished now with the top section, so we can take that out of the way. And the, the information that we need to make the blind is now on, on the bottom section. It tells us what size to cut the rails in order to fit into the frame. It tells us what size to cut the fabric, and more importantly, it tells us how many plates the fabric's going to need to finish the job. So again, for the sake of ease, I actually cut the width of the fabric. I haven't done the shape yet. I cut the width of the fabric, and I also cut the frames yesterday, just so that we could assemble it all here this morning. So what we have, incidentally, if you want to know whether your supplier actually manufactures the blinds or whether he's buying them in, all you need to do is ask him what they call these individual components, because if he's buying them in, you won't have a clue, or ask him how much they are, you won't have a clue. We, we could tell you exactly what each one was called, exactly what the job did, um, and exactly how much they are, which might surprise you. So we have <coughs> three sections of rail, bottom rail which is going to take the main part of the fabric, we have an intermediate rail which is going to pull the, the fabric up and down and we also have a rail at the top which is going to secure the fabric in position. The top two rails don't move, the intermediate rail slides between the two. So we, we have those cut to size, um, we're now going to get the fabric. We know, I'm going through some motions here, but we know that this needs 21 plates of fabric on it. So we're going to count out the 21 plates. That. Always worth double checking. I've never cut one in the wrong place. Much. Two, four, six, eight, eight, eight. One point, that's correct. And we'll just simply cut that off to the required point. to the right drop. We have the frame cut to size and it's ready to, to cut the shape. So the way we do that we've got to secure the tape to the bench. Secure the fabric to the bench with the tape. Incidentally I'm very aware that we're probably doing some kind of a training video for our competitors here. But I think that we're not really doing anything that Nova Light wouldn't be prepared to show. So, and I also might make a few deliberate mistakes as well, just to, to throw a spanner in the works. I made that last bit up. This one's pulling out to be taut. So I'm able to get a nice cut. Wants to be 117 mil. 
so we're going to mark that. We don't mark it right to the top, we actually mark it half a plate in because the top plate's going to fit into the into the rail. fits into the frame it's going to need some mean of support so that it doesn't sag as the blind's drawn across it is, it, it, otherwise it just hang out the frame. So what we're going to do is we are going to drill some holes for the fabric corresponding places on the on here so we're going to do this first. So. Now in order to avoid putting pencil marks on the front of the blind we're going to turn this over so we're actually working to a mirror image of what we're told. So if we if we take the back of the blind, which is that, which is now shaped running the opposite way, we are told by the document where to position the holes. So draws up it'll pull away from the side of the blind so that takes care of that it also calculates how many holes we need to, to punch in so the first hole is I was first told how to make these blinds I was actually told to work this out mathematically rather than follow the instructions the reason that we're following the, the instruction to the letter is if the blind ever had to come back we will know exactly where the holes were were, were, were punched we're not going to be wondering well did we tweak this one did we alter it if we follow this to the letter we, we know where they're going to be and it avoids problems later on so we've got the marks, what we're going to do now is just punch them through using the a punch over here. <coughs> if we do have any trade customers looking at this, the, the price of this piece of kit on its own would put you off manufacturing blinds. If I told you that we need two of these, thousand quid, thousand quid, thousand quid, thousand quid for a bench, the, uh, it, it just depends where the price of the blinds comes from. series of holes, don't know if you can see them, punched into them, ready to take the support lines. What 
I then need to do is ensure that the holes in the fabric line up exactly with these. So what we're going to do is slide the fabric into the bar. to do is, is drill holes through the centre of the fabric in order to take these support lines. some mean of stopping the fabric pulling out of this bar once it's put under tension. And the way we do that is we run a plastic strip, a rigid plastic strip, along the top and the bottom. Again, I would imagine the majority of people who, who you might ask if they manufacture their own blinds wouldn't even know these strips existed. Actually, um, there's obviously a number of component suppliers that will supply plate of lines. Over the years, we find that different manufacturers' components are sometimes are better than others. So, for example, this piece of plastic is from a different supplier to Lubalite. Um, there are certain components that we've mixed onto the system that we find do a much better job, and th this is one of them. to allow the cord to run through. Again, it's got to line up with the holes that are in the fabric, which then have to line up with the holes that are in the framework. You can just punch these holes out, but the problem is, you don't get a clean hole and then sometimes you struggle to get the fabric into the bottom bars. That takes care of that. What we then need, when the blind's pulled out, what we don't want to do is pull it flat. So we need some mean of ensuring that the pleats remain pleated once the blind's fitted to your conservatory roof. And we do that on, on another bench using an echo pleat system. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay the fabric loosely onto the, onto the bench, fix it in position. tension on it just to ensure that we don't get a load of loose at the bottom. Then we're just going to tag this ribbon to the blind. The ribbon incidentally comes in different colours, many different colours. 99% of the time we use white because you can't see it 
once it's behind the blind anyway. But if you wanted a particular colour ribbon, we can usually, well, we could always source it. There's actually a couple of different manufacturers' equiplating systems as well. This is Lobelite, which was designed to run with the blinds. But there's another one by a company called Eclipse in Glasgow, which we sometimes use. And there's also um, a company, Bentine in Germany, who do an equiplate system. And on occasions we'll use theirs as well. It depends on, on um, what's right for the job, really. These individual components um, cost us pennies. The plate of blinds are, are one of the few blinds where the, the cost of the job is usually involving the time it takes to do the job rather than the component cost. Next door where the verticals are made and the roller blinds are made, I could have a, a vertical blind made in six or seven minutes. Whereas these, the job could take two weeks to make. So we'll just take that off. And that now leaves us with, with a, a made of ensuring no matter how tight we pull that, it's always going to have the plates at the side. So that's almost ready to put into the frame. What we also then need to do is, at some point, fairly soon, we're going to put a cord through here which we need to be able to get to at the back of the blind. So we're going to drill holes in the back of here to enable the cords to pull out and tension it up once it gets to your, onto your roof. This is where I get my tie caught in the drill, which makes for a much more interesting video, I'm sure. Gonna finish up with a YouTube special. bench clean because uh, especially on the the honey coloured frames and the brown frames sometimes all you've got to do is look at them and they scratch and it's usually at this point if they're going to scratch they do scratch so now we have a bottom bar with a series of holes punched into it ready to receive the lines that run through we now need to ensure that when the lines do run through these holes they don't get frayed on the on the bottom of the metal edge the right so we're going to put some plastic grommets in just to give it a smoother operation Believe it or not, there is a right and a wrong way to put these in, and it, it makes a really big difference to the job. If you put them in the wrong way, the first time the fitter comes to your house and puts the blind under tension, he'll just pull these grommets out. But it's the old story, it's easy to put in the wrong way around. The, one of the motivating factors for us um, setting our own site and supplying direct was trade customers are constantly, and I don't mean constantly, trying to get us to find ways of, of cutting corners and reducing the price of the blinds to them. Whether they reduce it to you or not, I, I would doubt. But it means that they make a little bit more money, but they don't understand the the problems that they can lead to by putting putting the wrong components or cheaper components. A good example of that is Louvelite produce some square corners which are slightly cheaper and they do take a lot less time to put in but they're rigid and if you've got any play at all in your conservatory the, 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 the thing doesn't fit properly they also look different so if we were to put a, a rigid corner on there and mix it with flexible joints on the corners of these it, it would be completely wrong to the eye but it would be slightly cheaper and trade customers generally just want the job done cheaper as, a, as an end user you could be forgiven for not not even realising that there was a difference, you wouldn't know there was an option, but it, there, there is options, there's always options, and it always boils down to price. <coughs> Excuse me. So we now have a blind which is ready to insert 
into the into the rail. So we're simply going to slide that onto here. some guys watching this now thinking oh that looks easy I'm gonna have a go at doing that this is uh, a relatively straightforward shape obviously we're just very talented so we'll make it look easy <laughs> never made a mistake it lies glibly right so you now have a blind which is coming together like that we need to cord this blind up so we can put some tension on it when you set your roof and it stays where it's meant to be the way we're going to do that is we're going to put some any caps on. the amount of cord we need which is twice the drop we're going to make this cord into a figure of eight and the tighter that you pull the figure of eight the tighter the blind becomes to operate so we need it to be two times the drop and then because it's going to be a, a figure of eight you need it to be four times the width sometimes helps just to put a little in the video doesn't realise this but this is her training lesson so for the rest of the day you're going to be making conservatory roof lines I've got complete confidence in you This is going to go through first time, which it sometimes does. It sometimes does, maybe one time in a hundred it does. why we drill the plastic out earlier on sometimes if you don't if you if you punch it out rather than drilling it out you get a little bit of burr on the fabric and you then struggle to get the cords through so that takes care of that blind starting to come together now and we're just going to poke those two cords through one of the holes that are drilled which means that at a later point we can tension the blind without it being taken down from the frame all of these holes at the back of the blind so you don't you don't ever see them that takes care of that we're just going to trim that off So the cord is going to take care of the tension on the blind. 
what we now need to do is make sure that the blind isn't going to sag when it's when it's at your roof. So what we're going to do, we're going to present the blind back to the frame. And this tells us the size that we're going to need to tension the blind up. So quite simply, we're going to a mile so it's uh, better to be safe than sorry with it all that we're going to do is run the plastic strip or the first plastic strip up till the centre of the blind tie a knot in it any trade customers watching would know that that never happens first time as it just has um, if you was able to play about with it a bit I just comes to the front, like so. We're then going to need another strip for there, another strip for there, another strip for there. Sometimes people don't like the holes in the blind, in the fabric, but it's much better than the alternative. And in the short term, I'm just going to put this loosely in position. I'm not going to run it all the way through for reasons which will become clear. there with the blind now. That sits in the frame. Like so. Then I'm going to start fastening the blind into the frame. You will need it's a, it's a better job. Again, it saves a little bit of time and money if we don't put these in. And you will probably not ever know they were meant to be there. But the, the correct way to make these blinds is to put a little spring in the, in the top, which enables the, the blind to remain under more constant tension. If you don't put it in and the blind, the, the strings then stretch, what you find is the blind becomes very slack to operate. It's a very simple job to fix except if the fitter has to drive 300 miles to do it for you, what you find is that people are on the phone saying, oh, when our guys are next in the area, they'll come and do it. That's resolved by putting a spring in, but it costs a penny more, so a lot of the trade customers don't want us to do it. And you'll be surprised, we're actually getting trade customers specifying not to do it. The thing they do is a favour by telling us to put different corners on or, 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 or cheaper methods because it's quicker for us, but the reality is, we, we pretty much know down the line we're going to get phone calls. Um, can we send our fitter back to, to look at a job that's gone wrong? And nine times out of ten, it's because there's, uh, there's been something happened after it's left here or we've been specified how to do a particular job. And it's, it's just, as far as the end user is concerned, it's just not right. Now we've got a, a spring in, which gives it a little bit of play. We can pull the cord tight, and the spring's going to keep it under some tension. So all we're going to do, ensuring that nothing snags, we're going to clip the frame, clip the blind into the brackets that we put in earlier, ensure it's still slack. <coughs> we're going to pull the bottom taut, again, ensuring that there's no cord snagged anywhere. Now need to do is because the window is a variable size and the plates are uh, a set size, i.e., 20 mil or 25 mil. <coughs> excuse me. 
it might need tweak a little bit when it comes into the frame. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull the first couple of cards tight and we're going to just see how the blind fits together. And we do that using these adjustable barrel clamps, which are going to, again I don't know if you can see them, they're going to sit onto the card. These can actually be adjusted later if we need them to be. Now this, this is another component that um, doesn't actually come from Lubalite, but it's the fitters will tell you it's a much better better system. That wants to be nice and tight. Don't over tighten it because if you over tighten it you can snap it and then it's, it's a remake. If you want to be able to get a note out of that, I'm going to make that a little tighter. tension set somewhere near on the cord. It's, at this point it doesn't have to be exact. All we try to do is, is firm the, the job up so that we can then make any adjustments that need to be made. Again using the same, same counts. All these are hidden behind the blind when the job's finished. What you do want to do <coughs> is ensure that the spring that we put in finishes up in the middle and the way you can tell that is if the, if the blind Moves like that one doesn't. So what we're going to do is we're going to alter the alter the cord on this a little bit. Slacken that off. You want to be able to move that in both directions. So where I'm going to do that is I'm going to get that set into the middle. I'm just going to pull the cords. Get them safely to slack out. terrible job trying to correct any, if the, if the angle's slightly out and if you can't alter that it, it, it makes life really difficult for him. So we're going to loosely tie a knot into that, that just wants to be okay to move them down. So what we're then going to do, now as we're looking at this blind now, the blind doesn't quite, I don't know if you can see from there, the blind doesn't quite fit the, the shape of the frame. So what we're going to do is tweak it so that it then goes up and, and it does fit it. That's not unusual. Um, certain shapes are worse than others, but it, it's quite common for that not to be the case. And what we're going to try and do, if I can just make it so you can see, is if we pull this up, that's going to allow that to go into position. This is the reason why we left a little bit of extra ribbon onto the plate earlier on. There's actually a tiny hole in the ribbon clamp which we put on, which enables the cord that to slide through. I'm just going to pull that into position, and hopefully that will have, that will have now pull that across so it fits. However, this top corner is preventing the blind pulling up as far as it wants to. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to trim that down slightly, just to enable the blind to come a little bit further up. And again, we'll just do that with a good pair of scissors. You do it in small sections, it, it's, it's far better to trim off to a small amount and do it a number of times than, than cut off too much and find that the blind short. Right, that still wants a, it's getting there now, but it wants, it wants a little bit more off just to, to make, give us a snug fit into the corner. Still wants, you could possibly see it wants a tiny more 
just a tiny small bit cutting off just between those two points and that will then be great. We have um, new starters, trainees coming along and saying, oh, that, that can't be a very good system if you if you have to start cutting it with a pair of scissors. It's just like fitting a door. The, the, your door frame will be a certain size and the door will be a certain size. But you, you've still got to make the two marry together. All we can do is make it as accurate as we can to make the fitter have a, an easier life. Right, I'm now happy with that. If we turn that over from the front, you should see that there's no there's no gap showing around the frame. So I'm going to tie that loosely in position. We don't we don't fix it hard because the the fitter does want to be able to adjust it when he when he gets to the to the job. So we're going to just put a little clamp loosely on and just tie a knot in it. And then when the fitter comes out, what he'll do, he'll clamp everything up and, and get it finished. We have actually done a few of these jobs, supply only. Usually to trade customers, but occasionally to end users. And I would say every job we've ever done for an end user who's wanted to fit it themselves has bounced back to us and they said, oh, there's something the matter with the blinds, they aren't working. And we've sent the fitter down and it was just little things like this where they need a tweaking. And that's without exception. And again, you'd be surprised at how many of the trade jobs where they've taken them supply only. I've actually got some photographs of some blinds that we've made where we've strictly followed the sizes that we've been given on supply only jobs. And you wouldn't believe how much the blinds are out by. Right, so we've now got the blind to fit the frame. What we need to do is, as the blind runs up and down, we don't want it to fray on these leading edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little brass. I'm laughing because this is another thing that we've, we actually get specified from some trade customers not to put these these brasses on um, because it saves a little bit of money. And you, you, you are talking pennies, but it makes a huge... Of course they do it under the guise that they don't like them to be seen when the job's finished. They don't say it's because they want to save money, but that's the reality. If, they, if those little brass, brass rivets aren't on, I can guarantee you this fabric will fray. when things start going back on the shelves of course. Right, so we've now got a blind. If that was at your roof now, that would just sag down. No good to anybody. So, which is the reason why we needed these holes put in. Some people say, oh, we don't like the holes in, we don't want the light coming through. If we didn't have them, that's what would happen. So what we're going to do is secure the blind to stop the thing sagging. And we're going to do that using up and what we're going to do is put manufacturing skill and technology in the world can't make up for my dodgy eyes. <laughs> so. What I'm going to do is just drill a hole um, to allow those strips to run through.
feed and other lines. Those pencil marks incidentally that I put on need polishing off but I figured that nobody would be particularly interested in seeing me do pencil lines with, with GIF or SIF. Am I the only one in the world that got stressed when they changed the name from GIF to SIF? Or marathons to Snickers? Maybe a grumpy old man thing. This is a very valuable point to mention, and um, I just forgot to put a rivet on there. As this comes up, the, again, I don't know if you can see, but we've actually got half a hole drilled there. I'm just going to snip that off, because what happens is, um, people would look at that and think that it afraid with the corner. You're going to say, there's the hole that we're going to use. There's a half a hole which we just cut off when we cut the angle. But if we left that, there's nothing wrong with it, but people would just think that it was, was some fray caused by it rubbing on here. Um, again, that happened a lot so we, we, we just snip them off so that they don't they're not there anymore so they're not stone ever come out. The nylon sometimes stretches. Again, if you, um, if you were seriously considering the blinds, if you wanted it, we can actually put um, metal uh, filos in here, which obviously don't stretch. They're a little bit more expensive, but the, and the, the plastic coat as well, they don't go rusty or anything, but they just give you a firmer job. But they are quite a lot more expensive. If I told you, that's the metal filo, which I think is a hundred and something pound a roll. That's something like £20 for four or five times as much. So we can use metal if you want. That generally is what's used. You're always going to get a be better job with the metal. But again, when, when we're doing jobs for our own customers, they nearly always specify that they want the best job doing. When we're doing jobs for trade customers, they nearly always specify that they want the cheapest job doing. I've never done a job for one of our own customers where we haven't used the, the metal pile But I'd be surprised if, under normal conditions, you were ever given a choice. Again, a lot of the, lot of the trade customers don't even know you can get that. Unless, do they care? These want to be tight. You don't want to over tighten these, you don't want to be like guitar strings because what you don't want is having this pulled in out of position again. They just want to be nice and nice and taut. sure that that works. By the time the fit pulls that up tight, that then takes care of that and you can, you can possibly see that's, that's a snug fit all the way around. So what I'm now going to do is just trim it off, just put a little extra knot in these just, just in case the screw ever came loose. Now, in 
in order to set the tension on the blind, you've got to remember that sometimes you're operating these blinds two or three metres above your head. So I'm just going to see what that feels like. That maybe feels a little tight to me. So I'm going to do, I'm going to slacken this off just a tiny amount. Again, you'd be surprised at the difference it makes. It's how it runs nice and smooth. All that remains is for me to put the handle on. Just being told there's only four minutes recording time left, so this is me getting my finger out now. Put a handle on. Once we get to this stage, the, what it has to do next is it goes back next door, um, gets the corners put onto the frame, gets the polish to, to remove any marks or any, any minor scratches, gets the final quality control check, um, and then gets wrapped and ready to go. So there you have a triangular roof line. We'll just snip the cord off, and that's it finished. I hope you found that informative. Um, not too informative if you're a trade customer. But that's the basic principles of your conservative rubber brand. Hopefully now you're comfortable that we manufacture them and you're confident when you place your order. Thank you very much.